Right now, it's the best of Groucho. It's the Groucho Show, brought to you by the makers of Old Gold, Spin Filters, who invite you to test for taste and discover the best taste yet in a filter cigarette. And here he is, the one, the only... I have a couple of friends of mine that I want you to meet. This is uh, Kennedy and uh, this is Nixon over here. <laughs> That's their names, you know. This may sound mysterious, but through these pigeons, we're going to tell you the name of our next president. I'll tell you all about it in a few minutes. It's very interesting. Now, George, what's the secret word for tonight? Well, I think we'll have to ask another pigeon here, uh, or a duck. Uh, there this, is. Is, this is the secret word, and if any of our couples say it, they'll win an extra $100. Before we meet our first couple, here's Vane Smith to tell you something you should know about cigarettes. Nixon and Kennedy, I think that's... I think the one with the green uh, top is Kennedy. <laughs> this must be Nixon. He looks three years older than Kennedy. You know? <laughs> well, smile, boy, smile. You're running for president. <laughs> you know, in a big election year like this, everybody makes predictions. And now everybody's making guesses about the election. There's no reason why I shouldn't. Now, Adlai, uh, you tell him what we're going to do tonight. Adlai? Adlai, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that these pigeons, whose names happen by sheerest coincidence to be uh, Nixon and Kennedy, happen to live in Washington, D.C. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't Pennsylvania you really? Avenue? No, I don't know exactly where, but we're going to turn them loose uh, mm. somewhere maybe several hundred miles. That's what I plan on doing with you. They're turning yeah. me loose. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we were going to see which one of the pigeons will uh, win the race to the nation's capital, Nixon or Kennedy, you see. So far, I'm following you, George. Go ahead. Well, first, we have right here the man who owns the pigeons, from Washington, D.C., Mr. Maynard Durrity. Okay. How do you do? Uh, now, which one are you, Nixon or Kennedy, huh? I'm, uh... Your name is what? Maynard Durrity. Oh, what is that? Maynard You're Durrity. kidding. Nobody Durrity. has that name. Yeah. Maynard Durrity? Yes, sir. <laughs> now, how long have you been interested in pigeons? Uh, practically all my life, got you. A member of an organization of about 11,000 members. All pigeons, and, uh, are they? No, members of the organization, oh. American Racing Pigeon Union. And uh, these, uh, it's a hobby, and these birds are very intelligent. They uh, have a marvelous homing instinct. Now, let me get this straight. You're going to release these two birds, and the first one to arrive in Washington is our next president. Is, is that right? No, sir. Assuming a pigeon can be president. No, Gaucho. We, uh, we uh, will, uh, after the show, we're going to take a plane and uh, fly to a point in Richmond. To, Richmond? To, Why Richmond? To, in Virginia, rather, to release the birds. Uh, fa George, would you come out here a minute? Would you mind explaining uh, how this pigeon pole is going to work, George? Uh, one of our uh, NBC special events crews will be waiting in Washington. Uh -huh. And uh, when the pigeons come to their loft in Washington, why, they will take photographs and of the one who arrives first, and that one will be our president, either Kennedy or Nixon. Well, anyway, if you folks out there want to know who's going to be our next president, just watch our show next week. Of course, with our luck, somebody's cat will get loose and eat up our next president as soon as it lands. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, Maynard, and, and good luck uh, with Nixon and Kennedy. Thank you. Nice meeting you, guys. Show. Nice seeing you. <laughs> now, now, look, I know pigeons don't have anything to do with the outcome of an election. We're just having some fun. But there's one thing I do know. You, the voter, have everything to say about how an election turns out. And the real result is up to you and you and you and what you do in the voting booth on election day. In other words, whatever you do that day, be sure to vote. Uh, Groucho, uh, Joy Harmon, and Laverne Boss are standing by to talk to you. So, folks, you men, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word to buy an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. <laughs> Joy Harmon, that's you, huh? Yeah. And uh, you're Laverne's boss, is that it? Uh, Baus. Groucho. Baus. The name is, is B-A-U-H-S. Baus? Yes, sir. I think Joy is a very appropriate name for a pretty girl. Uh, are there any more at home like you? Well, I have a sister by the name of Gay. Oh, that's pretty good, too. Huh? Between Gay and, and Joy, you could have a wonderful time. 
How old are you, Joy? I was just 19. Oh. oh. I'll tell you what you do. You're pretty young for this show. You come back later on, say in about 40 years. Okay. Could you do that? Yeah. And you're Levine, uh, Levine Boss, huh? Laverne Bouse. Laverne right. Bouse. Yeah. You don't mind if I ignored you when you came out here? Not at all, Groucho. As a matter of fact, I was ignoring you a little bit. <laughs> well, that makes it a mutual admiration society. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Does everybody call you Levine, Mr. Boss? Uh, no, sir, uh, Groucho, the handle is Red. Red. What line of work are you in, Rusty? I'll call you Rusty, because if I called you Red, we'd be investigating. <laughs> well, I honestly... You know, care. people are very jumpy nowadays, you know that? <laughs> I don't know what to say, yes. You don't have to say anything, just stand there. That's <laughs> What line of work are you in, Mr. Levine? Uh, ionosphere physics, Groucho. No, come again. Now, what's that? What is that? What do you say? Ionosphere physics. Well, I do too, but I mean, what, uh, <laughs> what kind of a job do you have? Well, it's uh, the investigation of the ionosphere, which is located from uh, 50 to 250 miles above the Earth. I own a sphere? Does everybody own a sphere, or is it just uh, red-headed fellas? No, it's there for everybody. Uh, huh. Radio communications uses it mainly. Oh. Now, where do you study this I own a uh, staff, uh, Rusty? Is that in some saloon on Main Street? Or? Well, no, uh, Groucho. Skid Row? Actually, the last place uh, was the South Pole in Antarctica. Well, is this some uh, sort of a polar expedition you were on? Yes, uh, Groucho, there, uh, we was down for IGY and USAR. IGY? You don't have to spell it. I'm over 21. <laughs> that spells Iggy, IGY. <laughs> now, well, who is Iggy? Did he go with you on this trip? Uh, Could you love a man whose name was Iggy, George? Well, I guess so. I, I don't know. Iggy? What about if it was Oogie? Could you love a man named Oogie? Yes. You, you could love any kind of a man, huh? Yes. Oh, that's nice. what, what about me? What do you think yeah. of me, uh, Iggy? I'll, you I call don't know me. you too well. No, well, that's, that's the way to know me, too. Huh? <laughs> don't ever know me too well. You'll find I'm a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, now, who is Iggy, Rusty? Iggy is the International Geophysical Year, uh, Groucho. And, uh... You haven't said anything yet, you know. Well, it is one of the programs that was worldwide uh, where we were able to uh, correlate scientific information throughout the world. Well, Rusty, I want to ask you something, Mr. Levine. Doesn't it get pretty cold at the South Pole? Uh, yes, uh, as a matter of fact, it does. Uh, our warmest summer day was minus six degrees below zero. And then, of that course, in the, the winter summer, time, huh? That was in the summer, and oh. in the wintertime, it got down to minus 110 degrees below zero. Oh. Isn't that where the um, sun comes in the... In the um, Do you ever do that stuff Thank in high school? Thank you very much. Enjoy what you did. Um, that was the secret word, sun. You said sun. Oh. <laughs> you know, gosh. the land and the midnight sun. You were going to say something about it. What was it? Oh, you I remember? just thought. I just thought that um, half the year it's sunny, and then the rest of the time it's um, night. Is that true in South Pole? That is correct. Yeah. Oh, I was just wondering. I don't know. Yeah, I just heard that from someplace. You, who, who told you? That? <laughs> You know, you should have taken Joy with you when you went to the South Pole. Because yes. she'd have warmed things up in the winter down there. We realized that a little too late, Groucho. Yeah. If you'd have taken her along, you wouldn't have had enough ice left for one eye highball. <laughs> How many of you, would you like to go to the South Pole with Mr. Levine? Well, <laughs> well I always had it wrong, though, because I thought the South Pole would be the warm, it'd be so warm there, but it's not. No, no, no. Both, both the poles are cold. In fact, I used to know a 10-foot pole. He came over from Warsaw, and he was freezing. <laughs> well, uh, how many of you went on this expedition? There were 17 of us, Groucho. 17? Yes, sir. Wouldn't you have rather had 16 and uh, Joy along? 
Well, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. How many girls were on this uh, expedition? There were no girls, Groucho. Uh, there you, was no girls at all? You're 17 men? 17 lonely men, I and might And how long? How long were you there? Uh, I spent a year and a day at the South Pole. Uh -huh. And uh, is that why they call you Rusty? Because... Uh, <laughs> still stick to the hair, Groucho. Would you consider your expedition to the South Pole a, a scientific success? Uh, very much so, Groucho. Oh, it's perhaps... What did you achieve? Well, Groucho, it's perhaps the only place on Earth where uh, we can investigate science and uh, have a complete understanding with all nations without uh, going through government... Uh... Nonsense. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said that. <laughs> Well, let's get back to you, Joy, in about time. Are you in school, Joy? No, I graduated from high school. Uh, high honors, I presume? Well, not too high. Uh -huh. I never did care for high school too no, much. No, are you going? <laughs> How did you like kindergarten? Uh, <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I did like high no, school. No, well, I, I know. But are you going to college now? No, um, I'm working. Well, don't, you, you, don't you like school? Well, I never did like it too much. I never had too many girlfriends, you know, in high school. Is that what you go to high school for, to have girlfriends? No, but I don't know. I just, I like my work better. I thought they go to high school, uh, you know, to have boyfriends, if, in addition to getting an education. Couldn't you make friends with the boys? Well, they'd always bother me, because, I don't know, they'd whistle and stuff, and I didn't like that, and I just didn't like high school uh, that much. Well, you didn't want the girls to whistle at you, did you? <laughs> Well, you know, the girls usually consider it a compliment when the boys whistle at them. That's a sign of approval. Well, I was on a silly thing. I was, Marilyn Monroe was very famous then, and I was always, I always wanted You think to, she's washed up now? No, but I always wanted, she just, you know, became very famous, and I always wanted to copy and mimic everything that she did, and I mm -hmm. used to dress like her in high school and all that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't too good. Well, it's a, <laughs> I would say it's a reasonable facsimile. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the boys did whistle at you, huh? Well, well, why would the boys want to whistle at you? I don't understand that. Uh. I guess because, I, you know, I, I was dressing like Marilyn Monroe. Uh-huh. I don't see how the boys could whistle at you. I should think it'd be impossible to whistle when they all have their tongues hanging out. <laughs> well, what are you plan? What are your plans, Joy? Are you planning to hook a rich husband and retire early, or do you usually stay up around midnight? Well, I'm not planning on getting married for a long What's time. What's that? I'm not planning on getting married for a long time. You don't listen to anything time. I said. I didn't get it. You said to stay up around midnight? I, um, no, I forgot what I said. <laughs> it was trivial, and it wasn't of any importance. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to get no, married to a rich man? No, because um, in my career right now, I don't want to... Career? Um, yes, I don't want to get married for about ten more years, maybe. I know. You want to be in show business, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you sit here. You know, you Why don't you sit here and ask me the questions? Everybody is trying to get my job. Oh. Would you like to do that? Try it. You see okay. I'm going to ask you questions. Now, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a young girl in high school that all the boys are whistling at. Huh? A young girl in high school? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I'm taking your place now, you see. Doesn't she got pretty eyes? Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. She certainly has. Are you sorry you're married? Mm, well... <laughs> I mean, you wish you were dead or something? <laughs> Frankly, I liked it better just a little while ago when she was standing here. Okay, I can tell you. Get up there, Joy. Okay. Well, I got rid of her, anyway. <laughs> Don't you ever plan on getting married, Joy? You're just going to live this uh, kind of monastic life. Uh, yes, um, because like I Audrey it. Hepburn, huh? You know, you saw me in, in Make a Million. I, was, I saw you from the curtain. Make a Million? What's, yes. what's Make you a Million? Saw, you saw the show Make a Million from, um, on Broadway. And were I you saw, in that? And I saw you sitting out, you know, we have a cur we have a hole in the... You were in that? In yes, in sir, I played Sam Levine's secretary. Oh, you were wonderful in that film. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You and that fellow that worked with you, that um, young skinny Bernie, guy. Bernie, remember that? Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I but didn't we know you were you, an we actress. To, yes, sir, we used to watch you, uh, watch the people out in the audience, and, and we have this hole, and we go up there and look who's the celebrities out there tonight, you know, and you sitting about the fourth row Yeah, back. I had a good time. I've been came back and later. And you laughed all the way through, too. Yes, I did, You yeah. loved it, huh? I had some wonderful scenes in it. Did you do the cheerleader thing that you did? Uh... Oh, okay, but... Yeah. 
Let me see if I remember. Get, uh, you Can I take my shoes off to do it? Take, take everything off. Just get out. <laughs> no, uh, this is America. <laughs> Go right down there. Okay. Um. T-E. It was wonderful. My father wanted me to be a tailor. <laughs> what a joke I would have been, huh? So I, I, you know, I had no idea when you came up here that you'd been well, in that I... show. I bet you'll never go to the South Pole again, will you? <laughs> My thoughts weren't there at that moment. <laughs> you're going to have a big career in show business because you're a good actress. And oh, you, and thank you. Look you. Is your sister in show business, too? Well, she's working as an extra. She's uh, at mm -hmm. Central Casting, so she works as an extra. Now, are you, do you plan on getting married in the uh, near future? Or? No, I can't really think of marriage because I think it's more important when you... If you want a career, you have to really work at it and stick to it. And when you think of marriage, it kind of takes you away from... Yeah, takes you away from your husband. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, oh, those maybe. noble, innocent dreams of youth. Yeah? Uh, maybe soon, but not... not Joy, my while. guess is some shining night in a white convertible will come riding by and carry you off to his castle in some housing project. <laughs> Joy, my advice to you is be prepared for marriage. You never know when it'll sneak up and hit you in the back. Suppose you suddenly fall in love and get married. Are you qualified to be a housewife? Well, my mother's... No, uh, not your mother. I mean, <laughs> you can't both marry this fellow, you know. Your mother's probably got a, a husband, hasn't she? I, mean, you know. I think so. I... No, I... Well, you might... <laughs> no, 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 no. You might ask her sometime when you're home. No. Maybe you could come home unexpectedly and trap her. <laughs> I, what I meant to say is, I think I could become a housewife, but I'm my mm. mother's married. I know that. Do you always slap your thighs when you're talking? Uh, I'm just... I, I, I thought maybe going to fly out in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. This reminds me. Uh, George, would you come out here a minute, please? Fenneman. <laughs> would you send somebody to my dressing room for that questionnaire I've been uh, saving? You know, I think it's in the overcoat of my other suit. All right. Uh... That yeah. big ulster I wear, you know, when I come down here. I always wear an ulster with months with an R in them. Because you never know when you're going to need it. And I think right now we could, we could use the want? time while I'm getting the questionnaire yeah. to uh, have a message from our sponsor. A message? Well, let's take a minute to hear from Vern Smith about old gold spin filters. I have this questionnaire here that we copied out of a magazine. It's for single girls who are planning on marriage. Okay. Can you make a meatloaf? Gosh, mommy, mommy makes a good, um, no, she can help me. You I mean, you see, if you marry this mythical knight, uh, your mother can't come in and cook for you. She has her own problems. Well, you I could get the recipe answer. from her, and it's pretty the, easy, I think. Is yeah. she good on meatloaf? Oh, she's got a terrific recipe. Oh. Two. Can you manage a household on a budget of $35 a week? And if so, what would you spend it on? Now, break this down into... Uh, well, um... Gosh, what kind of man? With $35, he's going to earn $35 a week? Yeah. That's pretty little, I think. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> now, suppose your husband, uh, he has, has to work late. I, are you afraid to stay home alone at night with that dance that you were doing before? <laughs> well, if we lived on $35 a week, I guess we'd have to live with my folks, because you couldn't uh -huh. get a place. <laughs> In other words, your mother would be back doing the meatloaf just the same. <laughs> well, Joy, I'd say you pass with flying colors. I predict that when you get married, your husband will be a very happy man. That is, if he's an ex-mess sergeant in the army, <laughs> runs a laundry, and is president of a string of banks. No. <laughs> but now I think we'd better see if you can accumulate a little nest egg. So, George, come in, and let's see if they can win some money. All what right. category did they select? Uh, cities and small towns in the United States. 
That's okay, right. Joy, you know, these are three, two, and one. You gotta win five to get a crack at the big money. Fire away. Two hundred. Two hundred? Oh, you mean I pick any one from yeah, you? Yeah, these are the three. These are tougher. These are less tough. These are the easiest. Okay. And this All is right, the uh, far as primeval. Oh, yeah. For two hundred dollars, in what state are Bay City, Saginaw, and Dearborn? Michigan. Michigan is right. Now you got two hundred dollars. And three more chances to make five. Okay. For two hundred dollars, in what state are Norwalk, Stamford, and Waterbury? Oh, that's where my hometown, Connecticut. Connecticut. You live in three cities? In no, three? but no, Connecticut's my state, oh, rather. Connecticut, Connecticut. Can you spell it? C O N N E C T I C U T. Put it out there. <laughs> you now have four hundred dollars and two more chances to make five. Okay. You excited? Yes. Oh, this. But Did you I'm... ever think you'd be on this show? No. Yeah. No, but we always watch you, though. That's yeah. My mother's. You're, you know, you're my mo mother's favorite. Yeah. I'm always a mother's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> For two hundred dollars, in, in what state are Fort Dodge, Fort Madison, and Sioux City? Um, Iowa. That's right, Iowa. And you now have six hundred. Oh, oh, did you really? You now have six hundred dollars. That's where all the lawyers live in Sioux City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not listening. <laughs> You're going for three this time. You know, there's a lot of lawyers <laughs> live in Sioux City, George. Sioux City, a lot of lawyers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need somebody to punch it up for you. <laughs> For 300 bucks, in what state are International Falls? I played there. Uh, Mankato, I didn't play there, and Winona. International Falls, Mankato, and Winona. Minnesota. Minnesota's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and you, uh, you now have $1,200 besides. <laughs> Uh, and which means, of course, you'll be back in a little while to try for two, oh, five, or ten thousand dollars. Let me ask you something. Why do you hug him when it's my money? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm angry. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, I had you... this hand standing there, and I couldn't do it. Oh, blame it on me, swell. <laughs> <laughs> I was a yellow. Yeah. yeah. You were yellow in every school. Well, <laughs> congratulations. We'll see you later, Thank Joy. You so much, huh? We'll see you later. You're going to get a chance at the big money. Sure. Goodbye. Our contestants will try for the big money in just a moment. Joy Harmon and Laverne Baus uh, won $900. Watch your length. And uh, they're coming in right now to try for $10,000. Folks? Hi. 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 Oh, you're back again, huh? Yes. All right, now, you you understand this game? I you, you pick a number for from 1 to 10, a 10 grand, and we'll put it up here. Okay, shall I pick my number? Oh, eight. eight. Eight, put an eight up. Now, you pick one for 5,000, Red Dog. Is that right, Red Dog? <laughs> Five. Now, if neither number comes up and you get the proper answer, the correct answer, you'll win a total of uh, 2,000, right? Okay. Now, one of you spin the wheel. Go ahead, John. Okay. <laughs> That's a shame. Close, but not close enough. Well, you're going for a total of 2,000. The former Miss Nancy Langhorn, L-A-N-G-H-O-R-N-E, of Virginia, made history by becoming the first woman member of the British Parliament. For a total of 2,000, tell me by what name she's known today. If you don't know, guess. Uh, take a guess. Langhorn? Well, that was her original name. Well, here's the uh, answer. It's, uh, read it out. Lady Astor? Lady Astor. Lady Astor. Very well-known parliamentarian. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wind up with how much? Oh, we, we had so much. <laughs> how much money did you win? I don't know. You said... How much? A thousand dollars with a secret word. Well, each one oh, five hundred dollars. So wonderful. I'm glad <laughs> you won the money so because you're Thank a you. good, talented actress, Thank and I'm sure you, so you need it. And George, be sure they each get their carton of old gold spin filters before they leave. Thank and you. give my love to your mother's meatloaf. Huh? <laughs> Thank you.
good night until next week. And no matter which of our products you buy, tell them Groucho sent you. <laughs>